Hey everybody, how's it going out there? Welcome to Movies and Music with AJ. My name's AJ, thanks for watching. And we're back today with another movie reaction. I'm excited to be jumping back into the world of John Carpenter. Of course, I've already watched two John Carpenter films on this channel, and they're the first two Carpenter films I'd ever watched. Back in July, I watched Big Trouble in Little China, and I absolutely loved that movie. You know, I'd have to look down the list, but it might be my favorite movie that I've reacted to on this channel. I'm a big fan of classic film, and I really love that the acting style in that film was subtly and at times not so subtly influenced by classic films. Particularly Kim Cattrall's performance, I felt like her whole vibe in that movie was just channeled out of like a 1940s or 50s like Howard Hawks type of film, you know, just really fast, punchy, but also kind of a little hammy in terms of her overall performance and delivery, but it was really fun, it was a really charming movie. Yeah, just funny, great action. Yeah, I just really enjoyed the hell out of that movie. So much so that I actually went out and got the Screen Factory Collector's Edition Blu-ray. So yeah, haven't had a chance to rewatch it, but I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, a ton of special features as Scream Factory does. I've got about two or three of their films on Blu-ray. Uh, I have the Event Horizon one that recently came out. I was a little disappointed that they weren't able to unearth the lost footage from that film, but that was always gonna be an impossible mission to take on. They tried, but yeah, I think that's just, we're never gonna see that. And then yeah, the second Carpenter film I watched on this channel was Escape from New York. I watched that back in August. And you know, I enjoyed it, it was good, it was solid, but I didn't enjoy it as much as Big Trouble in Little China. I don't know if it was a matter of my expectations being set so high just because of how much I love Big Trouble, that when I went into Escape from New York, I was just expecting something on that same level. Um, but it ended up being a very different film. Obviously, it was not a comedy in the way that Big Trouble was. It was a lot more straightforward, serious of a film. But yeah, I don't know what it was. You know, I just didn't quite connect with it as much as I thought I would just based on what I knew about it. But yeah, that was back in August. I thought it was long past due that I jumped back into the world of Carpenter, and it's October, Halloween's right around the corner, and I thought, yeah, this is a perfect time to get back into some Carpenter. So yeah, today we're watching They Live from 1988. Of course, it stars Rowdy Roddy Piper, and it's not even gonna be the last Carpenter movie that we watched this month, because like I said, Halloween is right around the corner. Hint, hint. So yeah, let's talk about They Live. I honestly really don't know that much about it. I couldn't even give you a one-sentence logline description of what it's about. I do know from having seen stills and clips that, you know, I know Roddy Roddy Piper's in it. I know it involves sunglasses and that, you know, there's a weird trippy thing where you can like, I don't know if people are aliens or what it is, but that's pretty much all I know. And of course I know that it's written and directed by John Carpenter, which means it's liable to have all kinds of weirdness and craziness in it. But yeah, just the fact that it stars Roddy Piper really intrigues me. Uh, I grew up on WWF as a kid, was a big fan of that era, you know, with your Hulk Hogan and Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker, that whole era. Yeah, Roddy Piper was always charismatic as a pro wrestler, so it'll be interesting for me to see how that translates to the big screen and what he's like as an actor. Yeah, I'm interested to find out, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's jump right into it. This is going to be my reaction to John Carpenter's They Live from 1988. Let's go. Like five seconds in, I'm already loving the music. It's a nice composition. The old classic leading lines. You got the street, you got the grassy patch, the train, all of it just converging. Based upon the short story, Eight O'Clock in the Morning by Ray Nelson. There's nothing available for you right now. Trying to get work, but it looks like there's none available. Nothing but ruin and misery. They have recruited the rich and the powerful. And they have blinded us to the truth. Who's the they in this? Our owners. They have us. They control Here we go. Us. He looks absolutely just transfixed on that TV. Or I guess those TVs. All I ever have to do is be famous. People watch me. It's funny because people nowadays complain about how young kids today, you know, Gen Z and even millennials, you know, they want to be social media influencers and they want to have a million followers on TikTok or Instagram. That lady was basically doing the 80s version of that. It, I think as soon as the concept of celebrity was invented, there were people who that's what they want. Excuse me. Uh, you need anybody, sir? Hey, there's no sleeping on this site, so you park your ass someplace else tonight. You need a place to stay? Justiceville's over on 4th Street. They got hot food and showers. 
I think Roddy Piper might be a little too buff to be playing a homeless guy. I'm pretty sure the regiment and diet required to have a pro wrestler's physique is not something easily attainable by people who are homeless. Howdy. Howdy. Yes. Steel mills were laying people off left and right. They finally went under. They closed one more factory. We should take a sledge to one of their fancy fucking foreign cars. You know, you ought to have a little more patience with life. Yeah, well, I'm all out. The name of the game is make it through life. Only everyone's out for themselves and looking to do you in at the same time. So how are you going to make it? I deliver a hard day's work for the money. I just want the chance. It'll come. I believe in America. I think I fall somewhere in between the two of them in terms of their outlook. It's like, yeah, definitely work hard follow the rules, but also know that in many ways the deck is stacked against you. It's a tricky, it's a tricky maze to navigate. It's a tough needle to thread. Oh, goddamn hacker that second time night that asshole's cut in. <laughs> I didn't know people were using the word hacker in 1988 though. <laughs> wow. The signal's being sent through town. He's giving me a headache. Yeah, tell me about it. We have been lulled into a trance. We are focused only on our own game. Choir practice went a little late last night, didn't it? Ah, oh, the church uh, lets us use the kitchen. Four in the morning. What's he getting at? What's he trying to accuse here? More and more people are becoming poor. We are their cattle. We are being bred for slavery. The signal must be shut off at the source. Daddy, I have a headache. Me too, honey. So whatever's going on, that signal coming through is also giving people headaches. There we go. Yeah, definitely something fishy going on in that church. Be weird if he walks in and it's just a recording playing of the singing and no actual people in there. Why does it feel like that's very much a possibility? They are indeed cooking, but it looks like they might be doing a different kind of cooking. They live, we sleep. They live is definitely a better movie title than We Sleep. I'm glad they went with the first half. Was I right? You have to face facts. Only a few seconds. I was right. <laughs> yeah, it just seemed weird that there would be people singing choir at four in the morning. We have no other choice. Robbing banks. No one heard that. Lenses till we're blue in the face. I guess that's one of the pros of having that loud choir music playing through those speakers. We gotta find new people, strong people, people that'll work with us. People who have the physiques of pro wrestlers. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> Just leaving, you know. The door was open. This guy's blind, though. Watch. Very responsible. Putting on sunglasses to stare up at this guy. I was talking to one old boy. He's from uh, from San Anselmo. He told me they got some sort of cult up there. End of the world kind of stuff. <laughs> that feels topical. You want to know the truth? This kind of shit happens at the end of every century. It's just people afraid to face the future. It's all dead. It's an interesting theory. Got a sniper rifle? Something's going down. Scientific investigation division? Is that what that said? Didn't realize LAPD had anything like that. I'm guessing this is LA. Looks very LA. Gearing up. <laughs> Coming through with a tractor, a bulldozer. Are they just gonna bulldoze the whole place? That reminds me of the movie Straight Outta Compton. If you haven't seen it, the opening sequence is great. But yeah, let's just say it involves a house getting bulldozed. Just calmly walking through the chaos. It's <laughs> a bit dramatic. Don't hurt him, he's hurting me! Stop it, bro! 
I'm guessing that clearing out of the homeless encampment was really just to provide cover for whatever this is. There's a very like traversing the layers of hell vibe to this walk that he's been taking, witnessing all this crazy stuff happening. Especially with that red lighting from the flares and the smoke. Somebody start World War Three. <laughs> That's a fun transition. I'm liking how these TVs just play this constant presence in this movie. Either for transitions or to set the mood of a scene. And a lot of it is just normal TV. Like if you were just watching it at home in your living room, it'd be like, yeah, just whatever. But in the context, the way it's being used and juxtaposed against the rest of the backdrop, it just has this really surreal, odd, creepy vibe to it. <laughs> Using them pro wrestling skills. That was very much a throw a guy against the ropes. And when he comes running back at you, that's the kind of kick you throw. <laughs> nice shades. Life is like a box that you found in a raided abandoned church. You never know what you're gonna get. He seems disappointed, but honestly, if I was in his situation and I found a box of what looked like pretty nice sunglasses, I'd be excited. Probably get a good profit selling them. <laughs> that was cool. It's interesting how it makes everything black and white, though. I mean, I feel like 10 years ago, it was really popular to see that Obey with the red and the white. Is that a reference to this? Is that, is that where this came from? What's that gonna say? <laughs> I'm gonna need to know the physics of, of this. <laughs> is this subliminally printed or painted on these things? Like, it reminds me of when you have a black light. You know, you have those pens or markers that will write in such a ink that you can only see it if you turn a black light on it. What's your problem? <laughs> I said, what's your problem? <laughs> Is he a skeleton? Or oh, Thank you, sir. don't even know what that's supposed to be. I'm just gonna guess an alien. You gonna pay for that or what? <laughs> this film is charmingly on the nose. The Bermuda Triangle. I just saw that on a book there. Man, I feel like there's things that we just always used to talk about in the 90s that we just don't talk about anymore, right? Like, who talks about the Bermuda Triangle anymore? But I feel like that's, as a kid, that's all I ever heard about. Like, as a kid, I was worried I was going to get trapped in quicksand or that I was going to go down in a plane over the Bermuda Triangle. Like, these were the ways I was going to die as a kid. I might encounter Bigfoot. People don't talk about this stuff anymore, right? I miss the days of harmless conspiracy theories, you know what I mean? Like, if people want to believe in Bigfoot or the Bermuda Triangle, there's like no harm in that, you know? It does, who's... But now the conspiracy theories nowadays are just so ratcheted up that they lead people to actually do, like, violent, disturbing things in real life. It's like people have lost their chill when it comes to conspiracy theories. So we can't have anything nice, you know? There's a lot of these creatures. <laughs> so depressed. I don't know what to do. All right, here's the comic books geek in me coming out, but it kind of reminds me of in Marvel. They have the scrolls, which is this alien race that can shapeshift. Those are kind of the vibes I'm getting right now. The old cynicism is gone. We have faith in our leaders. There are no <laughs> limits. We it must figures it would be something like this. Our <laughs> our Excuse me. <laughs> You look like your head fell on the cheese dip back in 1957. <gasps> You're okay. <laughs> this one, real fucking ugly. <laughs> I've got one that can see. 
Oh. Wearing sunglasses. I don't like this one. Bit. Yeah, I'm liking how these sunglasses give you French New Wave vision. And the added benefit of seeing these alien creatures. Where'd you get those glasses? Tooth fairy. I'll bet. <laughs> now let's go someplace quiet so we can talk this over. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we haven't seen the last of his pro wrestling skills coming into this movie. Like, just did a legit clothesline. I wonder what percent of the population is one of those creatures. <laughs> he just walked into a bank with a shotgun. That's uh... Maybe could have thought that through a little better. I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of gum? And I'm all out of bubble gum. Oh, shit. Oh. I used to play Duke Nukem 3D as a kid. And that's like the opening line of that. And he's wearing... Those same sunglasses Duke Nukem is. Is Duke Nukem basically just a riff on this movie? Mama don't like tattletales. Wearing sunglasses. My hype level just like increased substantially because this I think is going to be the closest I ever get to a live action Duke Nukem film. It is interesting too though, because in Duke Nukem, the cops were the aliens or the monsters. It's always a good day when something you like gets totally recontextualized for you. Helps you appreciate things on a deeper level, you know? This is like such a yuppie 80s apartment. I love it. This definitely looks like a set from American Psycho, you know? I swear to you, we're being controlled by these things. I don't know what they are or where they came from, but we right. gotta stop them! All right. You're fighting the forces of evil that none of us can see without sunglasses. So what do you do? Assistant Program Director. Cable 54. They're sending some kind of signals on the TV sets. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Things I did not see coming. <laughs> I mean, just slow clap. I don't even know what to say. That was intense. That lady was ready to commit murder. I mean, self-defense, but you know what I mean. Good for her. Yo, one week's pay. It's the best I can do. Good shot. You better find yourself someplace to hide and keep praying nobody ever finds you. Try these on. Hey! Stay away from me! I'm telling you, you dumb son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> Either put on these glasses or start eating that trash can. <laughs> Come on! I don't want to fight you! Stop it! No! <laughs> nice little parries there. Little... Put on the glasses! Oh, you dirty motherfucker! No! No, don't do it! Oh! You know, if one of these guys knew jujitsu, it would have been over by now. Oh. He just stays doing his wrestling moves in this movie. Just had flashbacks to season four of Game of Thrones. Oh man. <laughs> just imagine instead this was you walking by a sunglasses hut at the mall and the seller just really wanted you to try some sunglasses. You just need to one, sell one more pair and it devolves into this. Try the sunglasses on! Here we go. Alright, pin him. Get, get the three count. <laughs> Look at them! They're everywhere! Spring. Life's a bitch. She's back in heat. <laughs> oh, he's got the sunglasses on. Frank? The world needs a wake-up call. We're gonna phone it in. It's funny, because isn't phoning it in usually an expression that 
used to mean just doing something in a very lazy manner, not putting any thought or effort into it. Brand new. Got the Contact? first shipment today. Contact lenses? I obviously wear glasses, and I tried to get into contact lenses once. My eyes just would not accept having contacts on them. I just couldn't get them to stick. We don't stand a chance with a few guns and grenades. So what are we supposed to do? We seek out and locate their signal and shut it off. Now he claims that the signal may be coming from one place. Inside the house. The transmission is going out clean. Hey. The signal's coming from somewhere else. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, come on. They're killing everybody. I gotta find her. Wait a minute, are you crazy? I gotta see she's Just all right. Just stay back. Frank. What? Frank. What? Consent to switch. Oh, shit. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. Attention. Your wristwatch has malfunctioned. This I just created a hole in the ground. That's great. Two seconds. Better job. One second. Not only America, but the entire planet will be under the protection and the dominion of this power alliance. And I've just received word that our forces have won a major victory. Welcome aboard. Earth is our stepping stone for a You know you boys life. really should have dressed for the party now you can afford it. I gotta tell you, I sure am proud to be here. You seen the whole place? Where the hell are we? Backstage at the show, boys. That's where we come from. All carry-on luggage must be held securely. Thank you for waiting. Wait till you see what I'm gonna show you now. <laughs> the passenger signal goes out from here to the satellite. We bump it out all over the world. Can you get us inside? Never seen the inside of a TV studio before. Hey, fellas, I got a couple of my buddies here. I thought I'd give them the grand tour. You have your authorization cards. Right here. <laughs> Where's that signal? It's up on the roof, I think. Is this the two minute break or the 30 second break? That's me whenever a timeout gets called in football. <laughs> I know where the hell we are. <laughs> she looks confused. Ooh. Did she just kill him? You and Holly Claire? I'm Claire. Oh. Don't do it. Don't interfere. You can't win. Ten away from the dish. Seven. give a press conference and as Gloria, time you news like shit. <laughs> all the sex and violence on the screen has gone too far for me <laughs> filmmakers like george romero and john carpenter have to show some restraint uh, the name drops himself in his movie hey what's wrong baby <laughs> it ends like that okay I mean, mission accomplished, I guess. It's a fun place to end it, but it just leaves you with so many questions about, like, what are the implications? What happens to the, to this world, you know, now that it's been exposed? Yeah, what a fun film. That was really quickly paced, tightly edited. And that seems to be the thing with Carpenter, is that he just really moves. He just, his movies are quick paced, they're tightly edited, tightly written. They just push a pace, and that's, that's, I really appreciate that as somebody who in my own filmmaking, I try to be ruthless with my editing, which is to say that I'm not, you know, necessarily about quick ADD type of editing. I'm just, you know, if a moment needs to breathe, I let it breathe, but I try not to waste a single second in what I put in my short films. 
And so I appreciate Carpenter's approach. He seems to be very much about that same, just, you know, push a pace, but also let a moment breathe. You know, this is a 90 minute film and we stopped to have what, like a 10 minute fight scene between the heroes right in the middle of it. So I appreciate that he can just do that. You know, he, he'll, he'll keep a fast pace, but then say, you know what? For the next five minutes, let's just enjoy Rowdy Rowdy Piper doing what he does, which is just, you know, to use the phrase from this movie, you know, kick ass and chew bubble gum. But yeah, that was a really fun fight scene. That's got to be up there. That's got to be in terms of just fight scenes in cinema. And of course, we can't end this without talking about the fact that this does seem to be a satire. Definitely some political statements in this film. But at the same time, because it is just such a light, quickly paced film, and also a film that really seems to be taking you know, influence and paying homage to, to B-films and low budget, even exploitation cinema. And it seems to be playing in that sandbox, you know, playing with those toys, paying homage and making reference to that style of filmmaking. So this doesn't seem like a film that's taking itself too seriously and its message too seriously. You know, it's more just putting it out there and it wants you to think about it later. But it's not trying to necessarily force feed a message, you know, as, as much as on the nose as a lot of this was. I think a lot of it was more to be provocative and just to be memorable, which it definitely was. Yeah, it's funny, there's this idea, and I feel like it was a lot more prevalent, you know, back during this time. Certainly when I was a kid in the 90s, I, I felt like I heard this perspective of like, you know, people are just watching too much TV, and they're getting dumber, and they're turning their brains off and just watching TV. But now I feel like that conversation has just kind of moved on from TV, and it's now, it's, you know, cell phones and social media, and that's where that blame is getting put nowadays. I mean, yeah, I'm in my 30s. I think people in their 20s don't even own TVs anymore. I do because I'm a film nerd, so I love watching films and TV on a big screen. I've got 2.1 speakers, gotta do it that way, you know? But that's just because I'm a film nerd. I'm kind of niche in that respect. I think the average person who's younger than me doesn't even own a TV anymore. But the same sort of message applies, right? The whole obey and shut your brain off and stay asleep. That message can still be applied nowadays. And it's funny how much of the messages in this film actually are still pretty relevant nowadays. It's just, you know, the message and the theme stays the same. It's just kind of the delivery system that changes with each generation. But yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how I feel about, you know, blaming the, the media. And by media, I don't mean like the news media. I mean like the device, you know, whether it's a television or, you know, a phone or whatever. That's what I mean by the media, the mediums that these messages are being delivered through. You know, I don't know that I blame those devices or pieces of equipment for people, you know, whatever you want to call it, shutting their brain off or being asleep to whatever issues are real in the world. I just feel like people contain multitudes. We can walk and chew gum at the same time. I can be educated on serious issues and, you know, for a couple hours a day want to watch TV just because, like, you can't live in a serious mindset 24-7. That's You're just going to burn yourself out that way. Like, I wonder people who are super deep into conspiracy theories... Is that you 24-7? Is there a moment where you just, like, can switch that off and just find some joy or some inner peace? You know, do you just, like, watch silly videos on YouTube and laugh at all? Or are you just, like, always living in that mindset? I just, it sounds so exhausting. I, you know, I, I couldn't imagine. Like, it's okay to turn your brain off for a couple hours of the 24-hour day, you know what I mean? But anyway, that's where I'm going to go ahead and leave it for today. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you want to follow along with more of my reactions, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell because that gives you notifications when I upload a new video. Signing out for today, this has been Movies and Music with AJ. My name's AJ. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.